In today's video, I'm going to show you how to grow mushrooms directly from the ones we can get at the market, such as oyster mushrooms. In this first part, we're going to isolate the mushroom so we can grow it in jars directly on corn kernels. And in a second video, when the corn kernels are completely white, we'll use them to grow these mushrooms directly in bottles. For this first part, I'm going to use corn kernels. You can also use sorghum, wheat, or, for example, brown rice, and we're going to wash them well, not only to remove any excess soil they might have, but also to rinse off any spores from other fungi that could be among all these seeds. When the water runs clear, we're going to put them in a pot directly over heat, and once we see the water start to boil, we're going to leave them for about 10 to 15 minutes. And once we're done boiling them, we're going to remove the excess water, so we end up with all the corn kernels well drained. Just like this, we're going to cover the pot, and leave it at room temperature for approximately 12 hours, or until the next day, to give any spores that survived time to germinate, so we can eliminate them afterward. At this stage, we're going to use alcohol, not only to sterilize our hands, but also the entire area where we'll be working. And here I have jars, whose lids I perforate, so there can be gas exchange, because the mushrooms we're about to grow. We'll need to breathe. Before adding the corn kernels to these well-cleaned jars, I'm going to add alcohol to achieve extra sterilization in each one of them. That alcohol will help clean out any microorganisms that might be inside. And these perforated lids will help with respiration because this fungus uses oxygen and releases carbon dioxide, and we want all that carbon dioxide to escape while oxygen comes in. What we don't want is for spores from another fungus to enter and contaminate the culture. In a lab or commercial setting, micro-perforated tape is usually placed over the hole. So spores can't pass through, but here at home, we're going to use a small piece of cotton. Don't pack it in too tightly, we'll leave it rather loose, and that will give us enough space for gas exchange, while preventing, for example, spores from another fungus from entering. We'll do this with all of them. And before adding the sterilized corn, I'm going to set all the jars upside down to drain any excess alcohol that may have remained at the bottom of the jars. Once we see they're well drained, we'll cap them to start adding the corn kernels to each jar. Before turning them upright, we sterilize the countertop with alcohol, and then we're ready to start adding all the corn. I'm going to use a spoon like this, always keeping everything well sterilized. Keep in mind that since we're going to grow these mushrooms, on these corn kernels, any competitor we might have could end up making us lose the entire culture. That's why I always recommend keeping the place, where you're working, as clean as possible. The pot on the outside as well, and I'm also going to use a funnel so it's easier to put all the corn into the jars. To fill them, I recommend going a little over halfway, leaving a good amount of airspace, so a good gas exchange can occur, for the carbon dioxide produced by the mushroom, as it breathes allowing it to escape and be replaced inside by more oxygen, so it can continue to live. We need to aim for the grain, to look rather dry on the outside, but already cooked and well hydrated with water on the inside. And in the case of the smaller jars, we're going to do the same, just with a smaller amount. Here at home, when I do this multiplication step, I try to prepare several jars, because once the fungus invades the entire corn kernel, in this case, we can store it in the refrigerator for about two to three months, until we sew it into the material we're going to use. And now, once we have everything in jars, we're going to give it an extra sterilization. Mainly because, since the kernels have been resting from the moment we boiled them until approximately 12 to 24 hours later, it's very likely that some spore that resisted the hot water when we boiled them is still alive. So, in this resting period, it starts to germinate again and with this second sterilization, we're going to leave all these corn kernels well sterilized. Place a cloth on the bottom, so the heat from the burner doesn't damage the base of the jars. Ideally, add water, so it reaches approximately the middle of the jars, to make sure there will always be hot water, because this will help the heat transfer into the jars, especially to the center where all the corn kernels are. One of the problems that can arise, is that when this starts to boil, the jars can bump into each other. I solve this by placing some pieces of cardboard between the jars, at least to keep them separated and avoid banging. With the pot directly overheat, once we see it start boiling, we're going to leave it for 50 minutes to 1 hour to make the sterilization. And in the end, we're going to leave them right here until they cool down to room temperature. If we see the water is boiling too vigorously, 
I recommend turning the heat down to a minimum, so it's more uniform and we achieve better sterilization. Once the time is up, we're going to turn off the heat, and I recommend leaving the jars covered inside the pot until they reach room temperature, before doing the seeding. And here we have all the jars sterilized. Before working and leaving them on the countertop, I recommend letting them cool thoroughly, down to room temperature. But before taking them out, I'm going to spraying the entire work surface with alcohol to maintain an extra layer of sterility. And your hands as well. Look how they turned out, it's important that we don't have water retained at the bottom, we don't want standing water. Rather, we should see loose kernels, because that will ensure that once we place the mycelium on top, it can invade all the corn kernels down to the very bottom. It's also important to have this airspace we left here, both in the large jar and in the small jars, so we have a good air exchange and the mycelium grows much better. It's also important to seed the mycelium when the jar, the corn kernels, are at room temperature, not warm or hot, because that can affect the mycelium's viability. Since I ran out of room in the other pot, I did the same process here. Keep in mind I'm doing this with a regular pot, but don't worry, we're going to achieve good sterilization. And now I'm going to show you how to take tissue from these mushrooms when we buy them at the market. I always recommend that you look for mushrooms that are more rounded and not all open like these, because this is already a sign that the mushroom is past its prime. It's better if they're nicely rounded, so we can get higher quality mycelium. Before working, I recommend that with a bit of cotton and alcohol, applied directly here, we sterilize as best as possible the place where we're going to work. This is the first stage of mushroom cultivation when we want to start from the mushroom we purchased at the market. But once we've advanced in cultivation, when we have all the mycelium grown, it becomes easier. On the other hand, we're going to spray the entire tray well to avoid contaminations, and also have a small plate in case we need to rest something on it. And don't want it to get contaminated. Then, in a little alcohol, I have tweezers and a knife to make the cuts on the mushrooms. If you have a burner, even better. We can also do this next to the kitchen stovetop, mainly so the flame creates a sterile environment all around where we're going to be working. We're going to look for mushrooms like this type. From above, we see them nicely rounded, and the thicker this part is, the better, because this is exactly where we're going to take all the mycelium that we're going to cultivate. When the cap is no longer nicely rounded and, at the same time, the stem has been cut too short, I wouldn't recommend it. It's better to look for mushrooms with the longest stems possible so we can extract the mycelium that's inside. And the rest of the oyster mushroom, we will use it for our meals. Always remember, a little alcohol where you're going to be touching. We could use gloves, but in these cases, since the tissue is quite thick, we're now going to try to reach that mycelium, that little part of the stem that's inside, to place it directly into these corn kernels. We'll lightly spray those pieces with alcohol all around, it has to be a very small amount, and use 70% alcohol, so it stays only on the outer edges. With very clean hands, we're going to cut away the outer layer, which we don't want to use for the seeding. All that mycelium we have inside, that white part, is what we're going to use to place directly inside these jars. Keep the jar just barely opened, anything we want to keep sterile should always be right next to the flame. This is the part we're going to cut. These techniques we're seeing now will be used later for the whole topic of cultivating medicinal mushrooms. And what would be the mycelium, the inner part that's well sterilized, we're going to place it here on top, next to all these corn kernels. We can tuck it slightly downward and immediately close the lid. What I just showed you, I did here in front of the camera, but ideally we'd always do it next to the flame of a burner on the kitchen stove to maintain extra sterilization. And for the smaller jars, we do the same. Right next to the flame, we remove the outermost layer, and this is the little piece we're sure is well sterilized, which we place among the corn. We cap it, and now it's ready for the mycelium's entire growth process to begin. This central part is the best because it ensures we have a pure mushroom to later place among these corn kernels we've already sterilized. As I mentioned, I'm showing you now, but all of this is always better done next to a flame. Once we have everything seeded, we need to take these jars to a dark place at a temperature of approximately 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, and we're going to start to see little by little, that from the center where we placed the piece of mushroom, 
a cotton-like growth begins to appear that will invade all the corn kernels until the moment when we see everything is white. In my case, I'm going to leave them on this wooden shelf here. It's important that it's dark so the mycelium can grow very quickly, and if not, we can place this, for example, inside a cardboard box to create that darkness, or as I'm going to do here, cover it with a black cloth. And when we have a jar that's completely white, we can store it in the refrigerator for two to three months. Otherwise, we're going to seed directly on sawdust or on wheat straw, as we'll see in an upcoming video, to do the whole cultivation directly in plastic bottles and harvest our own mushrooms. Sending you a big greeting, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.